My brothers and sisters in Christ, today's two readings present me with a, a pair of, of thoughts or reflection that I offer you today. The, the first one is from the gospel itself, in which we, we hear this question uh, of, of James and John, and we have to put it into context what's happening. In the gospel of Matthew, this is chapter 20, which means after everything that's happened in the gospel, and they've been on the road to Jerusalem for a while. Jesus is kind of staring down his passion and cross on this whole very intentional journey to Jerusalem. And they're now right on the cusp. They're, they're going uphill from Jericho, from the plain to Jerusalem. The, this is, there's just one quick account of the, the healing of blind men. But then chapter 20 ends and chapter 21 begins with Palm Sunday, the entry into Jerusalem. And so they're right on the cusp of in a sense of things going down on the cusp of what we would call Holy Week. And yet, James and John think they're being very zealous, uh, their, their mother, uh, and coming and making this request. They're following him. And this request that, from our vantage point, we can look on and say it's an absurd request, asking about James and John to be, to get be seated at the left and the right. Like, can we have the seats of favor at your side as you come into your kingdom? And, of course, Jesus responds, and it's very, very patient and loving. He asks, can you drink the chalice I'll drink? And they say, of course, yeah, we can. Well, they have no idea what he's talking about. He's talking about, can you drink of the, the chalice of the passion that I'm about to undergo? This brings up the fact that for everything that has happened, and with the best of intentions on the part, and not just James and John, the other disciples afterwards get mad, but it's only because James and John did something before they could. All of them are guilty. And they're guilty of being in the company of Jesus, and they're still oblivious of what Jesus is about and what is about to happen of the gravity. They're still jockeying for worldly position, for advantage over one another, for worldly power, which is so petty in the light of what's actually happening in their midst. And so this is for us a good warning during the season of Lent. Even as we undertake our, our prayer and our fasting and our almsgiving, whatever our Lenten activities may be, to make sure that we are paying attention, that we are listening to Jesus in prayer. That our prayer is one not just of talking more or doing more, but putting ourselves in the presence of the Lord to listen to him in his word and in the silence of our hearts in prayer so that we don't miss the boat of what's most important right now. We want to make sure that we go into Holy Week and the mysteries of the Triduum with eyes and hearts wide open, not jockeying for petty things. My second observation of the day is one that's a little more practical, and that concerns the first reading from uh, concerning Jeremiah. And we hear the way they plot. Let's record every word like we can do without him. Let, let's write down the words and find a way to trap him, to, to destroy him by the words. To me, this is reflective of an attitude that is far too prevalent in society today. It comes out the most on public figures with politicians and celebrities and the like, especially in social media. It's one of the worst things about social media. But it can come out even in our personal lives, our social circles, and the rest, which is instead of evaluating and judging the, the value of someone's words, of their truth claims, instead of evaluating them on their own grounds and then ascribing the credit or blame to the person, instead, we prefer to make a decision of whether a person is good or bad. And then no matter what, we will swing and you know shift the words around to fit the position. So if a bad person, no matter what they say, then their words are bad and must be false. On the vice versa, if it's someone we prefer, then whatever they say is the most true thing ever said, even if it's ridiculous. This is not the pursuit of truth. We can disagree with one another. We should always do so in charity but we should be people devoted to the truth. 
instead of people of just taking sides for the sense of taking sides. This attitude brings about divisions and rivalry and all of those things that harden our hearts and foster anger. But instead, we be, should be committed to the truth, regardless of who says it. And likewise, we should reject falsehood, no matter who says it. And so, may this time of Lent be a time that we recommit ourselves to listening to the truth, to listening to others, good and bad, and to make judgments based on principle and not on popularity. And finally, may we make sure we're taking time to listen to the source of all truth, the Word of God, that we may have hearts wide open. May God bless you.